Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending November 13th, 2021. Starting with um, Netflix marching on with their live action anime adaptations. The star of this week was the upcoming adaptation of Eiichiro Oda's One Piece with the reveal of the main cast members of the series. Uh, the official Twitter posted a video on Tuesday featuring members introducing themselves and their roles. 18-year-old Mexican actor Iñaki Godoy will star as Monkey D. Luffy. He previously appeared in a Mexican tr crime drama series. Um, Japanese actor Makenyu, uh, best known for portraying the final villain Inishi in the live-action Kenshin film series, will play Roronor Zoro, which is a pretty darn good match. Um, Nami and Usopp will both be portrayed by young American actors Emily Rudd and Jacob Romero Gibson, respectively. And British actor Taz Skylar will be Sanji. Um, the Twitter also posted a message from Ichiro Oda himself, who will serve as an executive producer on the series. Um, he shared the cast was decided after many discussions involving people all around the world, taking into account their facial features, their aura, their voices and acting skills, the balance among the crew, and other factors. So I don't know how many crystals were involved. Um, Oda finished by commenting that it'll take a bit more time to get the show done, but they'll do their best to deliver a show that'll be enjoyed by everyone around the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> a little bit more time. Um... <laughs> so, I. <laughs> chemistry, probably, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Their chakras aligned well, you know. It's all good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, do you think... They're muted? Oh, come on. That's not possible. It shouldn't be. Um, there's no reason they should be. We've got... Hold on. Um, we'll get that working. Um... That is one of those. Yeah, exactly. Um, I need one of those. Um, we will try that. And we will transition over that. Um, oh, I need the other one. Of course. It's not that. It's the other one. Um, we will try that. And turn that on. Nope, we don't need that, but that, that should work. Um, um, you guys talk? Not those? Okay, hold on. Interesting. What's the, what's the audio we need for that? Um, yeah, OBS is just not cooperating. Hold on. Uh, Otaku, uh, is this good? I mean, that should... Maybe it's another one. Hold on. Um, ah, wait a minute. Okay, oh, okay hold on. Um, um, that thing. I, I need that thing there. The thing. The thing. The thing. Oh! The thing! Um, I think it would be that thing. That thing. Spirit Destiny. How's that, how's that working, folks, in chat? I am seeing spikes now. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Hello, is anybody <laughs> in there? Anybody there? I'm Smile out if you hear me. Can you hear me? Is anybody home? Hey. Cool, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Took a while, but we got there. Um, so, yeah. Aligning chakras. We'll, 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 we'll see what that means in terms of, of the crew of One Piece. Here's the question. Um... Given Netflix's history with live action adaptations, and I mean, there's, you know, <laughs> they got some potential hits on there. Like the, the, the Kenshin live action final movie was, was great. The, the Bebop um, adaptation coming up looks solid so far. Um, 
How on earth are they going to do One Piece live action? <sighs> they would have yeah. to pick a story arc. That it's, yeah, it's got to. to. But I mean, no, I, I don't mean length. I mean visually. I, oh. You got Sci-fi Stretch Armstrong as your main character. <laughs> How do you make that work in live action and not look dumb? Have you ever seen the Fantastic Four movie that has never been aired? You know, the one that they, they did just to retain the Well, rights. yeah, I've not, no. Okay, so what they did for for the uh, for Mr. Fantastic, who has, you know, right. can stretch his Stretchy. arm. Stretchy. What they did is they made a, uh, uh, they put foam, colored it as, like, you know, the, the blue and white, mm-hmm. and with, like, a paper mache fist at the end of it, and on a stick, and just extended it forward, and that was the... Was the stretch. stretch. Do you think that's what they're going to do this time? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a solution. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, I would, I I, I'm going to guess know. it's maybe. Could you, I mean, you could green screen it. Just green their arms and then just do some well, no, I, do I, some CGI I, I, of the I, I stretching. Don't mean, just... I don't mean technically. Obviously, you can do anything with CGI. But Yeah, but I mean, that's the only. It's not going to look good. You know, it's because yeah. it's, it's, it's going to be very awkward because Monkey D. Luffy is it's, his arms don't just stretch. Yeah. He is right. very mobile, very malleable. Mm-hmm. So I, you're going to make some compromises that I think people who are a diehard to the series are going to be like, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. absolute hard no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know how you do it unless you pull back on that somewhat. You know, and so you have him do it like once or twice. Yeah, but it's just not yeah. a, a he, he's not doing it all the time and obviously in the, in the anime series he's not constantly stretching but still right um, yeah I don't know um, it's that's going to be a tough one for them I think I just I wonder how how committed they are they are to it are they going to do like a 12 mm. part you know thing or are they going to do 6 and see how that flies and then make a determination of like okay we'll do this in 6 six episode installments right? and we'll just see how expensive this is for the effects that we want to get see whether people are happy with the storyline and then you know cut it right off if, if we're not really getting the market share we're looking for you know they could do literally a whole do re imagining like they did almost with Death Note <clears throat> and, and that may not be a thing so, big stretching. Uh, to answer the question, um, it will c- hmm. cover the East Blue arc, and it'll be ten episodes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could imagine him not eating the fruit and then not stretching, but it's kind of <laughs> right. Yeah, I can't imagine that. That's very it's convenient, but, but it's yeah. terrible for the story. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's what happened with Death Note. I mean, that's they. I mean, they had you know Ryu, and they had the premise of the Death Note, but then yeah. they changed. Everything else. Uh, yeah. It's all written. Mm. So they know where they're going, mm. at least apparently. Mm. Um, I, you know, and man, I think you, 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 you may be right in, in the chat. It, it, it might be something that they aim towards the non fans, um, which would help. You don't have to like make it right. incredibly accurate. Right. Because in theory, if you stop and think about it, if you, well, you know, that's very true. Because if you sold it as here's an adventure of a bunch of different people on a ship and mm-hmm. they're pirates and, you know, you think swashbuckling, you think all this stuff. So if you know nothing about One Piece, mm-hmm. that sounds like something you would watch and enjoy yeah. maybe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you then if you had somebody go, oh, no, wait, his nose is supposed to be like five feet long and he's supposed <laughs> to be able to stretch his arm. And there's yeah. supposed to be this yeah. caribou bear thing that shows up at some point. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. So yeah, it's a good but, point. Uh, it's a it's a bold move, and I well, I yeah. wish them well. Yeah, <laughs> best of luck. At, at the end of this, I have a feeling a few months from now we're going to be going. Choices were made. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> right. it's always the case. Exactly. Um, also, this week, a few stories we want to cover. Um, uh, perhaps not in massive detail. Uh, the classic Kamen Rider franchise launched a new manga this week called Shocker During the Day and also revealed an anime will adapt the manga in 2022. Um, both are celebrating, celebrating the franchise's 50th anniversary. This thing's been around forever. Yeah. Wow. Um, 
The story tells the everyday life and struggles of the lackeys of Shocker, the, vo- the villain organization of the original Kamen Rider series. So, a little more goofy, a little, little lighter. Hmm. Um, that is, that is, if you guys want over the top nonsense, Kamen Rider is awesome. Mm, mm-hmm. All I, all I have to say, throw this out here is, in one of the earlier series, there is brain surgery as mortars are coming down and dust is flying. <laughs> Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> it's great. It's great fluff. I love it. It's great fluff. Um, Blackjack, you're a rebel. Um, uh, this week, Netflix re- revealed an anime based on Katsura Saiki's Kakegurui Twins manga uh, to mm-hmm. premiere uh, in August with production by Mappa. It's a spin off of the original Kakegurui manga uh, and is a prequel as well. It tells the background of how uh, a side character named Mary Sautome got her start in the gambling school. Um, Cloverworks is creating a TV anime of uh, In the Heart of Kunoichi Tsubaki, a manga. Uh, this is called a No Boys Allowed Female Ninja Comedy, and follows the titular character who, despite the rules of her all-female uh, village, has a secret curiosity about men. Ooh, wonder where that will go. And hilarity will ensue. And hilarity will ensue. <laughs> Um, the Call of the Night manga is also inspiring a TV anime. It's premiere in July. The main character is a human who often hangs out with a vampire girl, as you do. Uh, though he's unsure whether it's his blood or something else that keeps her meeting up with him. Then, of course, a cute girl from his past appears to buy for his attention. And the budding undead relationship is really put to the test. So, again, sounds like a very serious drama. Um... Gung Ho Online Entertainment announced this week. She, she gonna die. She can't. <laughs> or undie. Or whatever. Or on life. Well, if you're in the negaverse and you die, you're alive. All right. So. Yes. <laughs> um, the Ninjala Nintendo Switch game is getting a new anime series uh, coming in January. Um, it's going to be more involved than the net anime shorts based on the game. Uh, it's a multiplayer online game featuring a cast of uh, colorful characters that use uh, bubblegum based ninja techniques, basically. Um, so I think sort of Splatoon esque, um, just kind of a, a fun, um, I think a four on four, uh, kind of matches, kind of a thing. I'll um, be honest, the only Splatoon I've seen is is the Nendoroid figure. Okay, yeah, um, that has, yeah, looks like a squirt gun. Mm-hmm. I'm yep, like, I don't it. know what this is. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fun game. Um, uh, Splatoon is that, that is I've not not played Ninjala, but it looks looks like fun fun fun. Uh, Netflix also revealed this week the Seven Deadly Sins manga franchise is getting an all-new two-part anime film. Uh, yeah. The film is entitled Seven Deadly Sins Grunge of Edinburgh. Or Edinburgh. And we'll, uh, who knows the pronunciation of that? It could be character's name in Japanese, whatever. Uh, it'll focus on Melodia's son, Tristan. Both parts will stream on Netflix sometime in the next year. Uh, I didn't even know he had a son. I've lost so track of this. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. Um, this week also brings us a few pieces of Gundam-related news. Uh, Bandai Namco Entertainment and Sunrise have announced a new smartphone game titled Mobile Suit Gundam UC Engage. It is a war simulation game in the Universal Century timeline. It will launch in Japan in the next couple of months. Um, U.S. fans, at least in California, also have some Gundam to look forward to. The first ever Gundam-based pop-up installation outside of Asia is coming oh. to San Diego Comic-Con. November 26th to 28th. The store will feature more than 150 items, including, of course, Comic-Con exclusives and other items that are only sold at Gundam-based stores or the Gundam Factory Yokohama. (laughs) Finally, Netflix revealed a new concept art for the upcoming live-action Gundam film. Um, And honestly, it's just a CGI Gundam in front of flames. That's all it is. I saw oh. all sorts of articles going nuts about it, about how metal it looked and how amazing it looked. And it's it's a CGI Gundam backlit in front of flames. That's all it is. And it's like, it looks, it, it's, it's it's perfectly fine, but it's just it's a teaser image. Like, there's really nothing, nothing of, of, of shock there. Um, it was also announced this week that voice actress Yoshiko Ota has passed away at age 89. Um, she performed major roles including Leo or Kimba in Kimba the White Lion, Sapphire and Princess Knight, Akko in Himitsu no Akko-chan, and lots of others. She received the Tokyo Anime Award Festival's Lifetime Achievement Award back in 2016. Um, 
Chicago Gun's big comic magazine has revealed an upcoming manga from Go Nagai, who is still alive, and his dynamic pro studio telling the story of a business trip to San Diego that he and Osamu Tezuka took together in 1980. That's right. Um, <laughs> this is a thing that happened. Uh, basically, Tezuka and the guy and some others, um, I believe, were invited to Comic Con. Uh, back then, and they they went over like okay, fine, and people knew who they were, and were like aware of, of this, and were hungry for Western comics, and it is widely considered to be kind of the the beginning of the um, basically Tezuka went back to Japan and said no no we can sell our stuff in America like like it will sell over there, and that's what kind of what started manga starting to get published over in in the U S is that trip uh, in 1980. Um, uh, uh, the guy himself is known for Cutie Honey, Devil Man, Mazinger Z, you know, all, all the great stuff, and Tezuka, of course, for Astro Boy, Jungle Emperor Leo, Princess Knight, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, last. So, uh, sorry? I said just the great Tezuka. The great Tezuka, exactly. Um, last up, the Association of Japanese Animations released its yearly anime industry report this week. I have not dug into it, but at the high level, unsurprisingly, the findings show the global anime industry contracted by 3.5% in 2020, the first decrease since 2009, although there was the huge increase in 2019 to factor into there. Um, also, unsurprisingly, the streaming market did increase dramatically in 2020, the only market segment to see growth for the year. Um, overseas anime sales also increased slightly in 2020 and overtook the domestic Japanese market for the first time ever. Wow. More detailed findings are within the news report in the description if you'd like to check out the, spe the specifics for yourself. So the industry chugging along, uh, as is perhaps not surprising. Um, and I'm just going to real quick, while we're doing this, before we um, end, I'm going to see if I can pull that up. So is the global anime industry contracting? Is that like studios closing or people going out of animation or is that consolidation oh, of like little things together? Um, I don't think it's contracting um, in that sense, but who knows? Um, I'm pulling up sales the maybe PDF now. Well, it said that the, um, there was a mark, the market increased. Mm hmm. Um, so that's up, but the anime industry contracted. I'm like, um, now mind you, three point five percent's not yeah, anything yeah. huge, um, but just curious what that what that represents. Um, is that production, or is that like like producing new things, or is that just? Well, think about the uh, background studio that did all the background matting and right. stuff for various. They went out of business. What last year, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's like I could see if you said, oh, you know. These specialty uh, studios that did small things, they're getting um, consolidated or disappeared. Or the something. big thing I'm okay. seeing here is the uh, production minutes of TV animation decrease significantly. Um, yeah. uh, so basically, there is there, there are fewer minutes of anime being broadcast on television in 2020 than in previous years. Um, okay. So it's a production. Um, let's see wow. here. The, okay. uh, so in 2018... Um, there was the second highest amount of production minutes in history uh, was recorded. 107,006 minutes of anime broadcast in 2019. Wow. <laughs> um, um, there's a decrease compared to the previous year. So 2019 had almost the same amount as 2012. Um, um, in terms of the number of TV animation titles, 2019 had 314 down from 350 in 2018. Oh. Um, some factors um, include the deceleration of sales in the Chinese market. Um, um, also, the postponement of 2020 broadcast to delay delivery to China, um, where all the uh, episodes had to be delivered at once. Um, also, the shift of theatrical animation into streaming might be the cause, so more gun, uh, mm -hmm. and Rebo movies. Um, okay and so on um, and the report basically says this could also just mean that TV broadcast is becoming less dominant Absolute. yeah, yeah. As, as a you know it's been considered yeah. kind of the thing everyone looks at but maybe it's just not as much anymore 
Um, interesting, some other uh, things from the report. Um, let's see here. Um, unit production costs rose in recent years. Uh, also seeing the responses in questionnaires from some of the animation studios. Um, they also they increased along with rise in employment and management costs. Not too surprisingly. Um, uh, although such an increase was partially attributed to the higher unit costs from major American platforms. In other words, Netflix is asking for higher budgeted shows and more stuff, and so we're paying more for that stuff. Right. Um, uh, various factors at play. There's an interesting paragraph here. Um, um, the survey... Um, on November 10th, 2019, Japan Animation Creators Association published the report on a fact-finding survey about Animation Creators 2019. The survey revealed that the average annual salary of animation creators was slightly higher than that of employees working in the private sector across the board. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, compared to the fact that the average annual salary of animation creators was... Um, 1.7 million yen lower than that of employees in all parts of the private sector in the first survey in 2009, so a decade ago. Okay. Um, let's see. Considering the fact that the average age of animation creators is seven years younger than of private sector employees, the actual difference in, in, in pay would be expected to be even wider. Um, also, additional earnings, including royalties, licensing fees, tuition, executive salaries, and others arising from illustrations, manga, etc., were probably not calculated in the survey. Um, so if you're, you know, on the side selling things at Comic Cat, so forth, that's not factored in. Um, if such earnings were added, the average annual salary of animation creators could be estimated to reach um, 4.9 million yen, which would be close to the median of average salaries in all sectors. So it's hard to establish a causal relationship uh, between those two. Interesting. Now, granted, that means everyone. So animation creators includes directors, um, producers, character designers, CG animators, Animation checkers, layout, key animators, finishing staff, everyone across the board. So that's interesting. Um, that's interesting. Um, and then just looking at the, 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 the rest of the data here, um, nothing, uh, yeah, um, internet distribution continues to rise, um, um, OVAs continue to decrease. Merchandise. Um, actually, I saw a significant jump, jump last year. Um, theatrical works continue to rise. Multi re revenue, theatrical animation, rise. So, yeah. Um, and I will show you all, if I can. I'm going to try this. Um, can I close that? Probably not. Can I sh show a, a screen of, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give me some issues here. Oh, no, I'm going to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, if I go here, pull this over here. Um, expand it. Really big. Maybe. Maybe we can do this. I can show you all the um, which countries consume the most anime. That's not bad. Brazil. It's all Brazil. Uh, let me move this out of the way and then <clears throat> transition. So I'm now broadcasting Japanese animation overseas markets. Um, orange is most followed by pink and then blue. If anyone's curious. So, um, US big, Australia big, China big. Perhaps not surprisingly. Um, also big, Taiwan, Thailand, Korea, South Korea. Um, and then it, it, uh, it goes off from there. So we see Europe in general. Um, and then
then bits from you know, India, Mongolia, South Africa, Spain, etc. I'm just surprised Spain is that low. I expect Spain to be bigger. Um, and then um, let me also zoom in on this. Um, trend of overseas revenues over the past two decades or so. Um, and boy, doesn't this tell the story. Um, you know, the, the rise in the 2000s, the drop as a result of uh, fan subbing and, and, and the whole collapse of the American market, and then the meteoric rise in recent years of the, the Netflixes of the world. That's a lot of yen. 1.2 billion yen, not bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually interesting. I, I wonder how well Moving Train did um, uh, overseas. Given the, the 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 statistics there for Scandinavia, I wonder how it did in Finland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not apparently very well. Exactly. Um, yeah, pretty impressive. Cool. Um, that is it for the news. We will be back next week with more news. Sweet.